What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, and I design movie posters for a living. Today, I'm going to share with you a couple techniques that you can learn for your Photoshop skill set. We're going to basically do a mock scenario where we're going to design a character poster for the new movie Cyberpunk. Now this is definitely just a mock scenario. I have no idea if this movie is in production or not, but I know it's a pretty popular video game and I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to share some of the things that we do to character posters that you can do for your posters or if you're working on your own portfolio now. The cool thing about this tutorial is I make plenty of mistakes and I need to correct them. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because at the end I do a a lot of color treatments and then I do a little bit of a correction and I think you're gonna see an amazing transformation from start to finish so fire up Photoshop and let's get this tutorial going <laughs> what? okay guys this is gonna be another fun movie poster style tutorial I hope you learn a ton you can apply basically everything I'm doing in this Photoshop tutorial into movie poster design graphic design t-shirt logos whatever you'll get something out of this I hope first things first go ahead and create yourself a movie poster template if you're new to this I would suggest you go to one of my first videos where I show you how to create an official professional movie poster template with bleed as well as going over the DPI today I can just show you really quickly image size we're going to be working at 13 and a half inches width and 20 inch height at a 200 DPI resolution. To be upfront, I have no idea what this is gonna look like. I was going through the Envato stock website to pick out the photography, the neon signs, and the background. And the cool thing is that you guys can go to Envato, get yourself a subscription, and pick up the same exact photography that I'm using so that you can follow along in the tutorial. The cool thing is that with Envato, they give us a commitment mission for referring them business. So if you do subscribe, it helps out us and this channel and keeps us motivated to keep cranking awesome content. And then of course, I'll have the names of all of these pieces of photography in the show notes below. First up, I found these images. There was a photo shoot with this lady with a gun and definitely looked cyberpunkish. So I went ahead and downloaded these. But the problem is, is I love this shot, but I don't love this collar as it's hiding her face. And that's not cool. A lot of times the actors and actresses sell the movie. This just wouldn't fly with a movie studio. So there was thankfully another shot with her looking, you know, not at camera towards the side of the camera which is perfect so we're going to take this head and put it on this body and then we'll, we won't have that blocking her face that collar blocking her face and I found this cool neon sign that's going to be our background I was already kind of seeing you know how this is going to look but I think if we tilt it it's going to look kind of cool so I was just tilting it earlier and then of course we have some interesting cityscapes i'm not sure which ones are going to work the best we have a number of different ones in there ready to go and then of course we have the logo i just went to pngwing.com and they had some free download pngs and this was in there ready to go so it's not like i have to recreate this logo you can just go to that website and pick one up yourself so first things first let's get a little organized i want to put our actress in the art folder as you see i am organized for movie poster design so we put her in the art section and then our cityscapes will go in the background and this neon background we're going to put that in art but it'll probably show up right behind her so we'll put that behind her and then our logo is going to go in type and then we're just going to create its own group command g entitle that tt for title treatment and when we're ready to place that we will but we'll leave it there for now if you guys are new to photoshop and want to learn more about how to mask how to mask out images what i'm going to do is just mask out the background there's an awesome tutorial i did where i showed you how to use the pen tool i'll be using the pen tool now so hit up that tutorial if you are new to the pen tool it's called how to mask out a gun with a pen tool and you will learn a ton from there i think in order to save everybody's sanity i'm going to fast forward this part where i am masking out these two images and uh, play a little music so i'll see you in a few
Now I did the mask rather quickly with the pen tool. I might go back in once we have our other head on top of here and add some flyaways or other things to the mask and then maybe blur some of these edges or feather them a little bit more so they blend in with the background. But we'll do that a little later. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and try and get this new head swapped accordingly. And it's really funny because I'm imagining this is a like a really hardcore soldier chick and she's ready to go into battle uh, with a bathing suit. So I was like, okay then. But it is what it is. It's going to work for our cyberpunk poster today. If you guys are new to head swaps, go ahead and check out the head swap tutorial that I did. I'll go ahead and post that link right above us right now. It's rather simple. You do it a lot in this industry and others. And all you really need is the brush tool for an easy one like you'll see now. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up. Face swap is now officially swapped and we're just going to go ahead and organize this group and call it girl soldier like so and we really just need to figure out the cropping and we'll do that now by hitting command t and then we're just going to make her a lot bigger kind of see how we want her to fit on this poster something like that but then again kind of want the end of that gun to show up and i don't want that to be cropped out either something like this so i'm just gonna play around the cropping my idea is that if we have a little bit of space if she's not cropped in as much we have space to play with in the background and make some cool effects with the fluorescent lighting and all that cyberpunkiness and this should get us going for now and here is a good point in the tutorial to go ahead and add our background or at least start playing with it i like this idea of having a diagonal coming in not being able to read what that says you just need the idea that there is some cool lights in the back and then i think there's this you can really see this subtle i guess chain link fence and we'll be able to play off of that as well i'm just going to double up this this uh chain link fence stock photo and just hit command j i'm gonna just drop the bottom one so that we have the same kind of darkness in there something like that and then i want to have some of the buildings coming through in the back so let's just group this in its own little group and we're gonna call this neon lights. And then I think I'm gonna probably just mask this part here out so that we have the buildings showing up in the background. So go ahead and hit the mask icon and get your pen tool, hit P. Let's just see what happens. Now we can kind of see some buildings or at least put our buildings in the back. And I'm just gonna mask this one just kind of maybe combine two backgrounds and let that other background show through below it. I don't know if it's going to work. You don't know unless you try. And really what we want is to have a break in background around her head so it doesn't get too confusing. So if we're kind of flanked by buildings on each side of her head, or we can put some buildings in, but it'll be a lot more subtle and probably blurred out. But for now, let's just kind of keep that there. At least we have an idea of how we want this background to look. All right, guys, if you have been having any sort of fun up until this point right now, please hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And since we kind of have our general idea of this composition right rocking and rolling. Let's start playing around with the color. I think that part is extremely fun and you can kind of start to see the magic happen. So go to your adjustment layers, hue saturation, hit option command G, and then we're going to add color to her, to our girl soldier. So make sure you're on top of the girl soldier group. And now we can kind of get our lighting on all the highlights on her purple because we see this background purple and everything's going to be pretty much purple. And the reason being is the cyberpunk logo itself is yellow. So it's kind of nice to have a little contrast, all this purple, and then you have this logo yellow. It'll just pop. So back to that hue saturation layer, start tweaking with the hue and we can do something like that. Now we don't want her, like that's really strong. She looks purple, super purple. So hit command I, invert that mask, and then we're just gonna paint back in the color on the lights and on her armor and hair like such and we'll do more color grading further on and we definitely will have purple on her but just not as strong so that she doesn't look like a blueberry or purple berry 
All right, now I wanna get rid of this green as well. So let's just do another hue saturation. Go ahead and hit Option Command G. And the same thing, we're just going to go ahead and try and get rid of that green or at least make it a little more purple like that. Now go to your mask, Command I, and then we're just gonna paint that back in with a white brush. So B for brush and then make sure you're painting with white. Perfect. All right, let's see what we can do with our neon lights in the background. I'm pretty sure we can get some of this to pop a little more up here where this top of the chain link fence is. I just wanna kind of see what happens. So let's go to your neon background layer and adjustment layer, and let's just pop up the exposure. You can use a curves too if you want. I'm gonna use the exposure and then let's push that up. And then we're just gonna hit Option Command G and then we're going to invert that mask, Command I, and then just paint in with your brush on white. See what happens if we get a little bit of this to come through so it's a little more potent, all the chain link stuff. And now I just want to kind of touch up the background. We have this little area right here, which is kind of bugging me, that, that building. So we're going to try and get that out of the way for now. So let's just mask it out. And then on this other layer here, we're just gonna do a new layer and for now just paint in some of this blue. Go above it. And then on our background, I wanna I just wanna darken it out and see what it's gonna start to look like. And the easy way to do that is go to your curves adjustment layer and go to your properties. And we're just going to drop the or just darken it with that, whatever that thing's called. And now we want this to be on top of our buildings and not our sign. That. Oh man, <laughs> I was just looking and we have this little disruptor logo. And then when I was masking this out before, it says Nerf. And I really don't want to have that showing up in our, our gun. So let's go back up and fix that while I'm thinking about it. Go to our girl soldier layer and then create a new layer. And let's just get rid of this whole situation here. And the easy way to do that is just use your lasso tool or your pen tool and then get your clone stamp tool. And to do that, you can hit S and we're just gonna stamp this out. And then hit Command D and we can just use a little more stamp on the edges. Now there's a million ways you could do this. We could have turned the layer into a uh, rasterized layer and then use content aware, but uh, sometimes it's easier just to not do that and just do it that way. But whatever floats your boat. I thought I saw another logo in here. Oh, here we go. We got this Nerf logo, which is kind of cheese. So same thing, just go ahead and use your stamp tool. Hit S, hit option where you want to stamp from. Since we're going to have so much effects going on with lighting, this doesn't have to be perfect. You're barely going to see it. Well, that was lame, <laughs> but yeah, something like that. But no big deal. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think we're going to play a little, play around a little bit with the uh, color grading. So go to your effects and let's get some color ba balance rocking and rolling. And we're just going to pump up some of these colors to see what it's going to look like. And this is gonna help out with the skin tone, just adds a nice tint of purples. That was nice. I just wanna kinda of let that alone for now. Let's just work on this background part. It's bugging me out. I wanna I wanna get the colors down back there. So the same thing we're gonna do is we can try a hue saturation adjustment layer and try and get some purples out of it. Whoops, let's make sure we're below the neon sign because the neon sign, I like where we're at. Everything below it is not gonna work, obviously. So let's just see what happens if we play with the color. All right, that's cool. And then let's make sure our background is blurry. So this is a little bit more realistic and easier on the eyes. So what we can do is Command J, all of these layers, we have our, this is our, where we fix the background with some brushwork. Then we have the buildings and more brushwork in that other area of buildings. So go ahead and use the shift key, select all those layers, hit Command J, and now they're duplicated. And we're just gonna turn this into a smart object like such. And we can play with the blurring at this point and keeping it as a smart object just makes it editable and a lot easier to do. So go down to your filters and look for blur, Gaussian blur usually does the trick and we're just gonna blur it out. And then the cool thing is we can always go back in and play with that. If the Gaussian's there, you just click it again, double click it, and then we can go back and fix it. And this is above all these other layers, so 
That's basically our background behind the neon sign. And the same thing with our neon sign. We don't need to make another, another duplicate. Let's just go ahead and blur it a little bit. Make sure you're clicked on that layer. Go to blur and then Gaussian blur. And not blurred as much as the other part of the background, but somewhere 4.9, 5. That's a little better. I think it might be fun at this point to get a little bit of the atmosphere going. So I'm going to go check out Envato right now. I'll be right back. I'm going to pull some smoke and then we're also going to use some smoke brushes. So if you don't have smoke brushes, go look for some smoke brushes. There's some on Envato as well. I'll be right back. All right, I just dragged in a few of these smoke textures, smoke on black background. And then this one was already painted uh, purplish pink. And then this one here is a little bit more of an atmosphere. I'm not saying I'm going to use all of them, but I usually like to pull a couple different styles of smoke or whatever, just to see what works and doesn't work so for now let's just kind of put this one here down on the background area and just kind of oh, below the neon lights and see what it's going to start to look like i just want to kind of smoke out the background a little bit and then we can just play with a blending mode and we'll just leave it on the overlay drop the opacity a tad that's not doing a whole lot we'll just leave it there for now and now these guys here i want to be in our art folder so let's go ahead and drop them in the art and then let's see if these do anything for us now that's really strong, so we're going to put a mask on that and then Command I, and then we're just gonna kind of paint that back in a little bit with a really low flow of around three or 4%, so make sure it's on white. And I'm not really liking that. Let's just see if this does anything for us. Put it on screen and then I'm just gonna blur it out so it's not as potent. It's more of an atmosphere like that. And then let's just try that with this other one too. Just blur it out. I'm just gonna delete that layer mask, see what we got going. Add a layer mask and just paint some of this out with black. Then we're gonna group these into its own little group because so make sure you use shift, hit both those layers, command G, and then add a layer mask to that. And I just wanna do it all at the same time. There we go. All right, now let's start getting our little smoke brushes rocking and rolling. This area over here is bugging me and we might add some smoke here. So yeah, basically look for your smoke brushes. Mine are down here at the bottom and we'll see what they kind of look like and create a new layer above our building layer. Let's just go ahead and paint some smoke in the background. So I didn't really like the smoke, but what's bothering me is this green over here. An easy way to get rid of that green and just one other technique is to throw down a solid color from your adjustment layers and pick the color you want but make sure we're above the hue saturation because that was messing up our colors below and then drop that to color and now it's completely colorized but I wanted to have a little extra color that's just not purple coming in from above so just get a soft brush and let's just kind of paint out some of that on the mask with your black brush there we go you can kind of paint in you know just so there's a little bit of nuance so it's just not one big purple background smoke's not really doing a whole lot but we can try and paint some smoke back in so get your smoke brush and then let's just see what happens and then add a mask to that smoke layer and paint with black and we can kind of bring back the building so it's not too strong we can add a solid color to that as well. Go ahead and hit Option Command G, and then we're gonna turn that color into a purple and just colorize our smoke a little better and then drop our blending mode to color. It kind of just gives it a little bit of more purple. We can also see what it looks like with overlay. Yeah, let's just leave it on overlay for now and then just call this group Smoke, Command G, just stay organized like such, and there we go. And we can just get rid of our smoke that smoke stock photo, we don't really need that. We just made our own with the brush. Sometimes it works better, sometimes it doesn't. So just go to that and hit delete. Now up on our subject, I wanna start fixing this hair mask. I'm just gonna kind of smudge around it to soften it up because right now it just looks cut out and looks horrible. So one way to do that is by using the smudge tool or you can use a soft brush, but let's just go around this mask and just soften it up really quick. And we can always paint in some flyaways so it looks a little more realistic, which I think we'll do towards the end. We'll have some nice highlighted hair. Another way to do this is just to use the uh, burn tool because we're gonna have light coming from the background. So there's gonna be a lot of highlight and rim light coming from this. And now just go back to the smudge and now you can just kind of soften these edges. I mean, there's a million ways to do this. I'm just trying to do it a little on the quick side and then just get your brush 
and let's just get rid of this black edge here. It's kind of bugging me. And the hardness is around 25, and then you can put your flow around. I don't know, whatever works for you, 35 for me. That, and that's a lot better. I mean, we got a lot of work to do, but it is what it is. Same thing with this edge on the on our uh, neon chain link fence. Let's just go ahead and soften that up. I'm just gonna pull out the smudge tool on that. And then down here, I don't know, that's kind of bugging me, so let me just get this brush. And I'm just gonna do a straight line, holding down the shift key like that. All right, guys, I had to go work on another project really quick, and I'm back now, and I'm looking at this, and I think our next step is to go ahead and get these highlights going, so we have a lot of light coming from the background. Actually, let's fix our hair right now, clean up the hair a little bit. I just kind of want to get some flyaways going and we'll just paint those in super easy just get a brush and you probably want your pixel size to be around uh two to three let's just work with three and see what happens you can just color pick some lighter color hair because we got light coming from the background actually these are all going to get painted anyway let's go ahead and paint some flyaways all right, not a big significant change. We might have to tweak that later. But for now, let's just get this, let's start working on the highlight. We have light coming from over here and we have light coming from over here and we have light big time coming from the back. And since she wasn't really backlit the way our background is lit, we're gonna go in and paint a layer of white around where we think the light is gonna be touching. And the reason being is we have a lot of darkness here. And if we just put some color on it, it's just not gonna do a whole lot. And we want this to kind of be a little on the exaggerated side. And we definitely want this gun to have a bunch of highlights because we do have light coming from there and here. So right now, go ahead and get yourself a brush. And then we're going to attach a new layer, Option Command G, start painting around the edges. And we can go back and forth. This is gonna be pretty boring. So we'll fast forward while I paint and then I'll show you how we'll add I forgot to mention you can name this white highlights just so you don't get confused with where that layer is and let's get back to paint see what happens with that now for the coloring all we need to do is go to our hue saturation layer clip it to our bottom layer option command G and hit colorize and then we're gonna want to color her uh, by bumping up the saturation and then picking the color so it's gonna be that purple color that or gonna invert the mask command I and then we're just gonna go ahead and paint around where our highlights are and then make sure your brush is on white and that will allow painting to commence these highlights and we can go back and forth with uh pressure and how much we want to show and i'll just fast forward now because it's a little boring all right you guys i was just testing the opacity on our white highlights gonna add a layer mask to that. It's a little strong around the hair up here and it looks a little weird. So let's just mask out some of that white now and then we can leave it in other spots and you can go ahead and tweak what you like and don't like, but they're around the hair is kind of bugging me. So with a black brush, let's just go ahead and paint a little bit of that out or make it a lot less strong with the white. And you can kind of do this wherever you feel like the so brush is a little too strong. You can just kind of paint it out. And it's good to get a little different view from behind. Or, I mean, from zoomed out a little because you can kind of see how it's going to look overall. And let's try and do something cool with our glasses. I think I have a good idea. We'll just go to hue saturation and then we're going to mask out her glasses. So get your pen tool. All right, and then go ahead and hit Command-I. Actually, hit Command-D, 
or if you did what I just did, all you got to do is invert that mask with command I. And now we are only using this port part of the mask to be able to allow the color to show through. And speaking of color, let's just go ahead and try and get some purples going. Actually, let's hit colorize. There we go. And then back up a little and let's see what we got going here. Let's bump up that saturation. There we go. You can always mess around with it, whatever you guys want to do. I'm just going to leave it like that. I got a little bit of purple in the back and then a little bit of a, just a more of a purpley rose tint uh, around the glassware. And then this way you can kind of see this electronic whatever stuff from the from the glasses the cyber glasses all right you guys let's go ahead and just fix up the background and then we're going to do some color treatment add some glowies and we're going to wrap this thing up right now i was just looking we need a little bit of highlight on the top of this fence from the light coming from the background so let's do that really quickly go to your background layer command g attach it and then we're just going to add a little bit of white whoops <laughs> that's a lot uh just a tiny bit probably be around five kind of go over that fence top and then hue saturation and we're just going to add some color to it option command g colorize and go ahead and invert that we can kind of paint where we want that color to go and we'll just change the color now to that and now we're just going to add a little smoke to the background new layer go to a smoke brush and then we're just going to paint a little atmosphere in the background. Just name that smoke brush so you don't get confused. And now we're going to go ahead and add what I like to call glowy. So go uh, above our subject, add a new layer, hit G for gradient, and then make sure up here in the upper left that the gradient sphere is selected. And what that does is basically makes a nice little blast of light for us. And we're just going to go around the subject in certain areas where we think there would be a little more light than other spots. For instance, right here and you want to just kind of pick your color i have a, a light pink we're just going to add these it can be a little strong for now we're going to go back in and fix right here go ahead and pick the color of that hair it's going to tie in our subject into the background a little better and that looks ridiculous but no biggie because just add a layer mask and then sometimes you can play with the blending mode to see if that's going to make it a little better soft light or an overlay let's work with the overlay and then we'll go ahead and invert that mask and then we're just going to go back in with a regular soft brush and paint where those glowies were and just gently add them in so drop your drop your flow down too because it's got to be a little more painterly and then let's go ahead and duplicate that layer but put it on normal and see if that's going to help out and then hit command a on the mask hit delete and get rid of black it out so that it hides everything and now we're just going to lightly on three percent paint in some of those areas real gently and then let's group these call call these the glowy group so command g and then glowies there we go all right, you guys, let's wrap this thing up. We're going to do some color treatment and then sharpen it and then add the title and we should be good. So in your effects group, go ahead and add a color balance. Actually, let's darken this up a little. It's really bright right now. So let's go to curves adjustment layer, drop that below your color balance. And then let's drop the brightness, something like that. And then go to your color balance and let's kind of see what happens when we add a little cyan and then a little magenta there we go and i want to add right in between these two layers a little color adjustment to see what happens when we use a color lookup one of these foggy nights maybe and then drop that down to overlay and then no i don't like that i'm just gonna hit delete and then I'm just going to go back and try something else really quick. Color lookup. And then let's go check out one of these guys. And before we add these effects, let's go ahead and sharpen it and turn off your effects, turn off type or anything above, go to new layer, and then we're just gonna make a copy or flatten, and that's shift, option, command, E, and then we're gonna turn that into a smart object by right clicking, and then we're gonna go up to filter, camera, raw, and we're going to basic, and then we're gonna add some texture and bump up the clarity, and this is just sharpening our image a little bit, and then we're going to go to detail, and then you can just bump the sharpening up, 
and hit OK. And now drop our effects back on. And that's pretty much too sharp. So let's go back into the camera raw, double click, and let's just drop it down a little. And then down here where our title is gonna go, we just want to darken it up a tad so you can read that C a little better. And we'll just use a little exposure. Paint in the darkness. And then we're gonna add a little noise layer, option plus new layer, and we're gonna do, I don't know, maybe 10 mode, normal, to, to overlay, fill with neutral, okay. Filter, filter noise. Let's do eight. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of color throughout. So color adjustment, and then we're gonna drop the blending mode to color, and we're just gonna dial that down big time. And then we're just gonna drop the saturation a tiny bit. And then let's paint with black. We can bring back a little in the face in certain areas. Then I'm gonna do a quick little cheat mode. Turn off your effects for now. Turn off your TT. Gonna hit Command J and duplicate this layer. Get rid of the camera raw by delete small, smart filter. And then we're gonna add a little Gaussian blur to the edges just so she blends in a little more. There we go. And then on the smart filter, go ahead and select that mask, hit Command I. And then we're just gonna paint in around the edges so that it's just a little more blurry on certain areas. And even the background gets a little more blurry. And now put your effects back on and your title. And there we go. Our character poster for the cyberpunk movie coming out in the near future. Actually, I have no idea. Uh, it'd be a cool movie if the video game's cool. The movie's probably cool. But for now, I like what we did. Fun little project, great tutorial. I'm hoping you guys learned a lot. And every time you open up Photoshop, you teach yourself something new. It happens to me all the time. And you just take it day by day and get a little better each project you do. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna go make another tutorial now. See you on that one.